Good evening. Welcome to the 2013 Martial Arts Super Show. That's right. I'm Master Ken, creator of an 11th degree black belt in <laughs> the most dangerous martial art in the world, Ameridote. I have studied at over three dozen martial arts facilities. In the past 17 years, not one of them has been able to contain me. <laughs> and after studying various styles all around the world, I realized that every martial art has a strength, but it also has a weakness, except for mine. <laughs> That's why we like to say, best of all, worst of none. Best of all, worst, worst of none. none. That's right. Now, I have some good news and some bad news. Bad news first, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but for all the martial artists in the audience tonight, everything that you ever studied up until this point is complete bullshit. <laughs> Someone name a martial art. Taekwondo, Taekwondo. bullshit. What's another one? What's jujitsu? Bullshit. Shotokan. Bullshit. The good news. Ameridote is perfect. When you learn my street lethal fighting style, you are learning the only art in the world that is certified to be 100% street lethal. The other good news is that simply by being here tonight, you are all officially part of the Ameridote family. And as head of the Ameridote family, I hereby demote you all to white belt. Congratulations. Thanks to my smash hit YouTube show, Enter the Dojo, I've managed to help approximately billions of people across all eight continents. <laughs> Which is why Ameridote is spreading throughout the world faster than a staph infection at a jiu-jitsu tournament. <laughs> but when they told me that they wanted me to come out to Vegas and spread my message, I thought, well, it's about time. <laughs> then I thought, why did they wait so long? Then the answer to that question hit me faster than Jean-Claude Van Damme going through an eight ball of cocaine. <laughs> I think it's that they realized that probably before my demonstration is even done here tonight, most of you will be on your way home to board up your dojos, kiss your families goodbye, and dedicate your life to training with me. So in that way, I would have single-handedly shut down this entire trade show. But. That's why Ameridote is making more waves than Steven Seagal sitting on a Russian girl's waterbed. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> now, I know that you're all intimidated to be in the presence of the highest ranking martial artist in the world, but I want you to know that I'm here to help. I'm here to help people like Shihan Dana Abbott. Someone who has dedicated his life to the study of the art of the samurai sword, which is extremely effective in a street fight, right up until the moment you get shot. <laughs> I'm here to help uh, Stephen Hayes, master of the art of ninjutsu. I wish we could all see him. But uh, as you know, ninjas are Masters of disguise, taught to fight from the shadows, attacking unexpectedly, and then slipping away undetected. Oh, well, there he is. <laughs> hmm. I'm here to help Diana Inosanto and Ron Balicki, experts in stick fighting and knife fighting. I, I'm sorry, guys. Stick fighting is not an art. Okay? You, you folks want to learn some stick fighting? Yeah. yeah, here, I'll teach you some stick fighting, okay?
And I've been trying to help the world of MMA by doing a uh, private lesson with Greg Jackson, but he keeps canceling on me. <laughs> Meridote is about changing lives. I don't want you to just take it from me. I think it's time to hear from my students about what a Meridote has done for them. Hello, I'm Todd Woodland. I've been training with Master Kent for about three years. I used to waste all kinds of time doing stupid stuff like going to work, talking to my wife. <laughs> but with Ameridote, I'm grounded. Thanks, Master Ken. Hi, my name's Steven, and I'm a male model. Uh, you actually, <laughs> hi. Uh, you actually might recognize me from uh, some of my work. Um, I was recently featured on an organic foods magazine called Organic Foods Magazine. <laughs> and um, if, if you haven't noticed, I'm, uh, I'm actually doing mostly hand modeling. Hence. Um, uh, thanks to the art of uh, Ameridote and uh, the groin grab technique, I've actually been able to strengthen and tone my hands. <laughs> and um, it's, it's really great because I can practice it at home. I can, you know, just work on some, I can just work with some tennis balls, you know, just squeeze some tennis balls, some racket balls, some lacrosse balls. I mean, basically whatever balls I can think of. And then, um, but uh, honestly, I have to, have to thank uh, Ameridote because it's helping me get a lot more hand jobs. So, hey, modeling, modeling, jobs, hand, mod. Hello. Um, my name is <clears throat> my name is Cynthia McKenzie, and I've been doing I've I've been I've been doing a Maradote for a while now, and. It's helped me gain a lot more confidence. <laughs> Normally, I'm very afraid of being in front of people who aren't my nana or my teddy bears or my cats, um, who are named Flubbernutter and Benito Meowsalini. <laughs> but. <clears throat> Ameridotes helped me greatly to improve my ability to speak in public, as you can see. And they say that if you're going to speak in public, that sometimes you should start with a joke. Here's a good one. Why did the kitten cross the road? Because there was a ball of string on the other side. Thank you. <laughs> also, for those of you who get nervous in public, they say that sometimes you should picture your audience naked. So... Oh. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> You all look very nice. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Cynthia. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Rachel Mann. Okay, that's, that's good. Uh, my name is Rachel Mann, and Ameridote has taught me to embrace my independence as a female. Uh, I don't need men. I don't need men. You know, I, it's like, I hate it when a guy tries to open a door for me, like I can't do it myself. Or they try to pay for my drink, like I can't pay for it myself. Or they try to touch me, like I can't touch myself. <laughs> Master Ken doesn't treat me like a woman. He treats me like a martial artist. Hi, my name is Billy. I was in a court-ordered anger management class when I found Master Ken's class. And it helped me get my aggression out while at the same time turning me into a street lethal killing machine. Now that I am so dangerous, I went to a lawyer's office to see if I could be charged with a crime if I kill some pajama-wearing kung fu fairy. 
But the lawyer said they couldn't give me legal advice without a retainer, so I went to the dentist's office to see if they could put one in real quick. <laughs> but they got like a three-month waiting list, so in the meantime, I guess I'll just have to take my chances. Thank you. Very good. Very good. All right, now let's get on with our demonstration. I always tell my students that the best way to win a fight is not to get in one at all. Which is why I created a technique that, if executed properly, will scare your opponent to death before they ever lay a hand on you. It's called the kill face. Yeah. Having a good kill face is like walking around with a loaded gun in your pocket. Only it's not in your pocket. It's in your face. And because my kill face is so lethal, I'm not able to show it to all of you, but I will demonstrate its power on these unsuspecting boards. Ready. Three, two, what? All right. Thank you. Now, while the kill face is a great technique, uh, it doesn't always work. Say you end up in a, flight, in a fight during a, a blackout or you're attacked at the school for the blind. <laughs> Sooner or later, you're going to have to make physical contact with your opponent. Now, what parts of your body do you normally use in a fight? Anyone? Your hands your elbow, your foot. What happens if you break your hand, or your elbow, or your foot? Fortunately, there's still a part of your body that utilizes over 15 different muscle groups that you can use to defend yourself. Your hips. <laughs> Which is why I created a little technique called the thrust of freedom. <laughs> I'm gonna need a couple of people from the audience to help me demonstrate, and I'm gonna show you how easy and yet devastating it is. Can I get a couple of, uh, there we go, you, sir. And uh, could we get a, a young lady, anyone who's, uh, you, you young lady, that, uh, that would be good. Come on up. Good, good, couple more. There, come on up, come on up, good, great. Come on up, take your positions. Now, because you're new, I want you to balance with these guys here just so you don't fall over, okay? Just go ahead and put your hands on the shoulders of the person in front of you. Now, there are four major directions in the thrust of freedom. <laughs> thrust left, thrust right, thrust back, thrust front. Thrust left, thrust right, thrust back, Thrust front. <laughs> left, right, back, front. 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 Very good, excellent. Let's hear it for our participants here. Thank you, thank you very much. Very good. Next step is to learn how to make contact with the thrust of freedom. This is something you can do in your own dojo. Here, come on, Rachel. Just find a partner, grab the pad, get a secure position, just practice a little thrust. Okay? Thrust. Sometimes you can even double up. Thrust, thrust. Okay? As you get better at this technique, eventually you'll be able to take on two at a time. Attacker in front of you, attacker in back of you. Thrust, 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 thrust. Thank you, very good. And whenever I teach that technique, people say, Master Ken, that's a perfect technique for when I'm standing up. What if I'm fighting on the ground? Are
I got your answer right here. Let's say I'm inside control. By moving my hand very quickly, I can move into a devastating position. Make sure you're in line with your target. Thrust! Thrust! Trust me, they'll never see this coming. While we're on the subject of ground fighting, I wanted to make a note for some of you Brazilian jiu-jitsu and MMA people. Todd, I see you guys wasting a lot of time on the ground, getting somebody in your guard. I see you trying various arm locks and chokes and things of that nature. I find it's a lot easier to just break the neck. <laughs> you end up in this position, just reach up and snap it. He's a lot easier to move around at that point. Okay? Another thing that happens when you do that, it's easy to open his jaw. At that point, what I would do, reach down his throat and grab his heart. <laughs> Rip it out. Set it in a place where you won't forget where you put it. Okay? Go ahead and take him to a standard scissor sweep here. Pick up the heart. Now, whenever you rip out someone's heart, it's yours to do with as you please. You can bite it. You can stomp on it. You could frame it. What I like to do first is to show it to him so that he understands what he did wrong. <laughs> it's like when a dog messes on the carpet. You don't show him right away, he's not going to learn. So whenever I rip out someone's heart, the first thing I do is look at him and go, no! <laughs> no! There we go. Let's say Stephen throws a right-handed punch. Wrapping, controlling the arm, gaining position, just choke. <laughs> now the thing about this is that if you just choke him out, he's of no use to you. Plus you're going to have to transport the body. You're probably going to have to find someone with a pickup truck, at least a wheelbarrow, something that you... <laughs> something that you use to transport him. But if you do this correctly, you can make use of him. Get him down on all fours. Put the belt in his mouth. Now, you've not only got control of him, you have transportation. I want you to remember that if it's not a Maradote, it's bullshit. I'm going to bow out. Feel free to bow out with me. Attention. Salute. Thank you very much.